Hey y'all, I'm Crystal and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about what nutrition plants need and what exactly NPK stands for. Now if you're new around here, welcome! And if you're all about gardening naturally, well go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to smash the bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. Plants need 16 essential nutrients that scientists have grouped into three categories. The first category is primary nutrients or macronutrients. The second category is secondary nutrients. And the third category is micro or trace nutrients. Now of these 16 nutrients, three are actually gathered from the atmosphere. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, while the other 13 are actually gathered from the soil. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, boron, chlorine, copper, iron, magnesium, and I'm gonna butcher this next one, molybdenum, molybdenum. I told you I was gonna butcher it. And last but not least, zinc. Now plants need all 16 of these essential nutrients to grow properly. If they're lacking in any of these nutrients, seeds may not germinate, roots may not develop very well, leaves, stems may not develop, and eventually the plant could die. But on the other hand, if a plant has too much of a certain nutrients, it could harm or kill the plant. For example, too much magnesium could actually turn the leaves a yellow color and eventually kill the plant. Now let's talk about the three categories of nutrients. The first category, primary nutrients or macronutrients are actually needed in greater quantities. And they are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. The second category, secondary nutrients are actually needed in moderate amounts. And they are calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And finally, the third category, micronutrients, are needed in tiny amounts. Boron, chlorine, copper, iron, magnesium, the one I'm gonna butcher, molybdenum, molybdenum, and zinc. Can't say that word. You know what other word I can't say very well? Photosynthesis. Go figure. Now, of all of these nutrients, you're probably the most familiar with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Plants need these in larger quantities and they actually make up the NPK label on fertilizer bags or boxes or bottles or however you're buying fertilizer. So let's talk about what these three essential nutrients do for your plants. Nitrogen promotes new and green growth. It's basically there to make your plant big and lush and green. Phosphorus is needed for root development, flower and fruit production. Potassium promotes water regulation and the production of defense compounds, which are an important component in pest resistance. Now when choosing a fertilizer, whether it's natural, commercial, granular, water soluble, it's really important to choose the one that best matches your plant's needs. I've got some examples of some different fertilizers and I thought we would just talk about each one. The first one we're gonna talk about is one everybody is probably pretty familiar with, miracle Grow. Now this is a water soluble fertilizer. Uh, when you mix it up with water, it makes something like this, it makes a blue liquid like this. And on the box, you'll notice that it says grows bigger, more and more beautiful plants grows bigger, more beautiful plants. So let's take a look at the NPK label on this. So on our NPK label, this one is 24, so the nitrogen is 24, the phosphorus is eight, and the potassium is 16. So what exactly does that mean? It means that we have a very high nitrogen fertilizer it's gonna grow really big and beautiful plants, just like the front of the box says. The next one is our phosphorus, and our phosphorus is at eight. 
And what do we know about phosphorus? Phosphorus is needed for root production, for flower production, and for fruit production. So if you're using this fertilizer for, let's say, tomato plants, you're gonna get great big, beautiful plants, no doubt. It's designed to grow big plants. However, you might not have the fruit production that you're actually looking for. For better fruit production, we need that phosphorus number to be either equal with our nitrogen or higher than our nitrogen. So me personally, I would use this on plants that I want to promote that green growth, like all of my herbs, like basil, cilantro, parsley, um, mint, sage, living grass, the list can go on and on. For those plants, I don't want them to produce flowers or anything else. All I want them for is their beautiful, tasty little leaves. Now in this bucket, I have a slow release granular. It looks something like this. Now these slow release granulars are used by a lot of old school gardeners and farmers. And this one, is commonly referred to as triple 13. And the reason why is because it's NPK label is 13, 13, 13. So it's equal parts nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So in many people's eyes, this is the perfect all around garden fertilizer. And finally, one of my very favorite fertilizers to use in the garden, fish bone meal. This is all natural. This is an organic brand and it is exactly what you're thinking it is. It is ground up fish bones. And this stuff will bring all the cats to your yard from two miles away. Now the NPK for this brand of fish bone meal, the nitrogen is three. The phosphorus is 16 and the potassium is zero. If you were using this solely in your garden, you would need to add something like maybe a kelp meal to uh, balance this out a little bit more. Kelp meal has something like a MPK of one, zero, and four, so it'll help balance it out a little bit more. What I like about fish bone meal is it gives your plants a really added boost of calcium. And I think we've all seen the dreaded blossom end rot on tomatoes. It's so heartbreaking. It actually occurs when your plants are calcium deficient. Now, when it comes to feeding and fertilizing your plants, you really want to follow the manufacturer's instructions because they vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. And since it's kind of hard to tell what your soil has or it's lacking, before you run out and buy a bunch of different additives and nutrients, I highly recommend sending out a soil sample to have your soil analyzed. And you can typically have that done through your local Ag Extension office. And finally, since 13 of the essential nutrients that your plants need come from your soil, it's very, very important to feed your soil so your soil can then feed your plants. And we'll talk more about that throughout this gardening season. Now for more great gardening videos, go ahead and click right here and I'll meet y'all right over there.